We live. Bienvenue, everybody. Welcome. I am your host and your friend, Wayne Nix, and this is Looking for Good Cooking. And today we're doing blackened redfish. And the reason we're going to do blackened redfish is because somebody in the audience actually wanted it. Dawn and I went to the hot sauce festival the other day, and we saw they had some blackened catfish out there, and I mentioned it. And I believe it was James Casey who said he loved blackened redfish. So today, that's what we're going to do, blackened redfish. But before we get started, I want to introduce my lovely wife, Dawn Nix. All right. Hey, everybody. My name is Dawn. Um, I'm going to help Wayne run the cameras today. I acted as the sous chef, uh, helping him prep uh, a lot of those vegetables. We actually have a lot of vegetables, fruits, and spices today, which uh, you're about to see, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, we are minus one host today. Our buddy Lance Fields is under the weather, so I we just wanted to give a shout out to Lance. Hope you're feeling better. And um, hope he's watching along. And I wish I could send you some uh, some black and redfish. That that might help the situation a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what Wayne thinks. All right. Yes, our friend Lance Fields is not going to be able to join us today, but he has a little sore throat. And these spices actually might help to clear some of his sinuses. But before we even get started with that, Dawn, I wanted me to tell the story about me fishing on the docks. And I grew up in Patterson, which is from the Tri-City area around Morgan City, Bayou Vista. And it's about maybe an hour from Lafayette, about an hour and a half from New Orleans. And one day, me, my dad, and my next door neighbor went down to the dock and we were fishing off the pier, right? And if you've ever been down to Morgan City, you know the church isn't too far, everything right there on the bayou. So you, all of a sudden, this long funeral procession starts to come by, right? And then my neighbor, he just stands up, turns around, puts his fishing pole down, puts his hand on his heart and tilts his head, and he stands the whole time while this funeral procession is going by. Me and my dad are still fishing, like wondering what's going on. And, um, you know, eventually we got up and we stood there too, and then we all sat back down and we said, George, you know, that's pretty nice of you standing up like a funeral procession. And he looks at us, he says, well, Doug, that was my dad's name, he says, it's the least I can do because I was married to it for 30 years, right? <laughs> so, all right. Let me tell you about another story. The other day we were fishing, and, um, you know, redfish, there's a limit. And the game warden stopped us, and he wanted to see my license. And, you know, I said, well, I have it in my truck. He's like, well, if you don't have it on you, then technically you don't have it. I said, well, what do you need my license for? He's like, well, if you're out here fishing, then I need to see your license. And I said, well, Mr. Game Board, that's where you're wrong. These are my pet fish. I'm not fishing at all. I'm just letting them do some exercise. You see, every day I come out here with my pet fish, and I let them out of the bucket, and I blow the whistle, and they jump back in. He's like, oh, yeah, really? I said, yeah, check this out. So I dumped them in the water, and uh, I'm just standing there, and the Game Warden says, all right, when are you going to blow your whistle? I'm like, blow my whistle? He's like, yeah, blow your whistle so you can get your pet fish. I said, what pet fish are you talking about? All right. All right. A little corny joke, but the whole point of that is there is a chef. He has a kitchen that's named K. Paul and Chef Paul Proton. And in 1984, when they had the World's Fair in New Orleans, he is credited with actually putting Cajun cooking back on the map. Right. And he did a dish that's called blackened redfish. And Dawn, do you want to tell us why it's so important? Okay, so the blackened, so the blackened redfish was made really popular by Chef Paul Prudhomme. So in 1984, World's Fair in New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, brought a lot of attention, brought a lot of tourists, brought a lot of journalists to New Orleans, and at the same time, Chef Paul Prudhomme was really coming out um, with these great recipes and his cookbook. And the story is, while he was a chef at Commander's Palace, one of the workers there did this recipe using fish on a hot, um, some sort of hot skillet with seasoning. Chef Paul Prudhomme saw it and improved upon it, and what he used was blackened redfish. So all these things converged about the same time, around 1984, and um, they just brought this attention, and suddenly people went nuts for this Cajun cooking. Blackening is 
an untraditional method of, of cooking, but it's an improvement upon what people were already doing. And I believe one of the purposes of the blackening is to uh, imitate the taste of fish cooked over an open fire. So this is kind of a modern interpretation to that. Um, because it was red fish, and he got all this attention, red fish was actually put on the endangered species list. And that's when, uh, like Wayne alluded to earlier, there is still a catch limit on red fish in the Gulf of Mexico. That's one of the reasons why we still have to have a fishing license, right? So before the show started, we are actually cooking this outside. So I'll be going outside in a moment. And I have an open flame with a cast iron skillet. And you want the skillet to get as hot as you can get it. In fact, they say you get them so hot that if you, if you rinse it off too soon, it'll crack the pan in half. Okay? But before we go outside, I'm going to go ahead and mix up the spices that we have. And right here, we have a few different things laid out. Don, you let me know if I'm in the shot or not. First thing I'm going to start with is paprika. And I like to double the recipe for this. I like a lot of seasoning. That's why I have so much flavor, baby. Right? So we're going to go ahead and put some paprika in there. And then it's about four teaspoons of salt. So I'm going to say we doubled that up, right? That's eight. My Louisiana education served me well. Um, I have some cayenne pepper. I'm going to throw that in there. Uh, what's about a teaspoon and a half? I also have uh, red pepper, which is a teaspoon. I have some dried thyme, which is a teaspoon. Then I have some onion and some garlic some white pepper, black pepper, and let's see, what else I have? Some thyme, right? That's it. Now, I have little medicine cups because you know I am a nurse, but we're going to go ahead and mix that in. You can use a little whisk or you can just throw it around the bowl. Either way, it's not going to matter. You have a shortcut, a time-saving tip for mixing all these uh, mixing all these spices. Actually, I do. There's several seasonings out there which you can buy that are already pre-made, and this is a very quick dish that you can make. Um, they have several different types of blackened seasoning. I like mine. It's lacking one ingredient that they all have, and this is monosodium glutamate or something like that. I don't know where to get that. I haven't really looked for it. Right. Now, the best part of this dish is it starts with a stick of butter, right? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm trying to get all this in the shot. This out. I like to pour half of this in my little dish. Spread it out a little bit. All right? And then you give that fish a little butter bath. Who doesn't love a butter bath. All right? Anybody in the crowd saying anything interesting? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I see Kim Boltman, Christine DeGraff. I see Mark HOA Seidel. I see Aslan Bloor, Cheryl Deuce, Julie Caraccio. Uh-huh. That is, let's see. Hold on. Michael Daniels. I see everybody in there today. Math skills. Christine DeGraff says, who says math skills never come in handy? <laughs> All right. So this is a pretty messy little dish, but it's great. Um, as you can see what this these spices are going to do is they're going to basically just make a little crust. And it's a very, very hot flame. I'm about to walk outside. Um, you said Julie Caraccio was in the audience, right? Now, is she the one that asked on how to cook the perfect fish? And Julie, I have to say, when you asked me that, I really didn't know the answer. I mean, I cook it my way, but you're right. I'm probably going to always probably overcook it a little bit more than undercook it. But I do know somebody, and that somebody that I know is Kevin Tompley, and he is actually a chef at two restaurants. Um, but he's a friend of mine from college, and 
I went and asked him and basically he said, Wayne, well, what you want to do, it's going to be about 10 minutes per inch of fish. So, and if you're cooking fish, you know, you want to flip it halfway through. And if you're cooking in a foil or any type of sauce, you want to add about five minutes. So I hope that answers your question, Julie. And I'm going to step outside. Hopefully I don't lose y'all. See you in a second. You can talk to me. So I hope that answered Julie's question about ending up uh, cooking the fish. Um, Ten minutes per inch and add a little if you're going to do a little bit of foil. So, what, okay, hold on, okay, there you go. Your house. I can't hear you. <laughs> yep. Preheated the, the skillet as hot as I can get it. And you're going to let that thing just simmer for probably about three to four inches. It's really, really, really hot. Um, one side, and then we're going to flip it, and then that's it. It doesn't take long to cook at all, and then we can discuss some of our sides. Um, I'm going to go outside and watch it to make sure I don't burn anything down. So if you need something, just holler. All right, now I have, I have the view. This is our redfish cooking. And if you're just joining us, I want to say thank you for watching. Um, you're watching Looking for Good Cooking, and we are fixing some blackened redfish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. All right. I'm flip it. Now, we have a lot of flies out here today, and I think that's because of the horses next door. And Dawn told me a little joke the other day about some flies. She said uh, she was farting some flies while she was out here going to check on the chickens, and she killed, she killed two females and two males. I said, well, babe, I said, well, how you knew which ones were female and which ones were male? She said, oh, that's easy. Well, the two that were male were on the beer can, and a two that were female was sitting on your phone. So I thought that was pretty ingenious. Oh yeah, babe, that's looking beautiful. We do, we're doing it outside, as you can tell. The smoke uh, is a little overwhelming. The smoke and the heat, um, again, it's a white, uh, just about a white hot skillet um, outside. And we're doing blackened redfish. Um, you can also do any firm fish is what is recommended. You can do catfish, tilapia, um, and chicken. Right, and we're going to show you how to do some black and chicken maybe too. We definitely got a picture that we'll share with you after the show. Now, there is somebody else that I wanted to mention. That we are doing recipes at this point pretty much based on what you ask us to do. So, again, we had mentioned James Casey, but there are several other people that have asked us to do recipes too. And again, if we don't know, we'll actually go out and seek out. And eventually we will be going to restaurants and we'll be going to our neighbor's house that sort of thing. That's the goal for us. We want to share the stories that, and basically inspire and encourage all the culture of Louisiana. We want to know what's, what's tied behind all that, right? We just love to know the things like we know about Paul Prudhomme. You know, there's an interesting story about him. He was at a golfing tournament, and I'll let Dawn tell you about the golfing tournament, if you don't mind, babe, and I'll go grab this fish off of the grill real quick. Um, yeah, let me get to that fish picture. There you go. Okay. Yes. Well, Chef Paul Perdome is, is multi-talented. He was cooking for 
um, a golf tournament in New Orleans, and he said he thought he had like a little bee sting. Um, he went on cooking, you know, it was a charity event. Turns out later on, it was it, I think it was a falling bullet that had grazed him. Um, you know, hopefully it was nothing too serious. This was a few years ago, um, but very very strange. Um, but again, he was there for charity, working and cooking, and just helping out the the golfers. I mean, I just think that shows Paul's dedication. You know, even for Katrina, after Katrina went and hit, he volunteered and came down and cooked for free. All right? He's he's one of the great Louisiana ambassadors, and in fact, he won that award. Um, you want to talk about that? Chef Paul Prudhomme was the first American-born chef to receive the coveted Merite Agricole from the French Republic. And it's basically an order, of, uh, it's an agricultural order, and it is a very uh, big honor um, for Chef Paul Prudhomme. While I am looking, dear, um, Cheryl Deuce asks, how do you know when to flip the fish? Well, I did it. With this one, that the fish is starting to flake. Can can you see? the The fish is actually starting to flake. But again, like we were saying earlier, it's about ten minutes per one inch. So and this is not quite exactly an inch. And you also want to make sure you have your fish. You know, they're not coming straight from the freezer to the grill. That's going to make a big difference as well. Um, and then for our sides, we're going to do. We're going to do a Caribbean rice, which we pretty much got out the box, but we also spiced it up a little bit with a couple of jalapenos and some pineapples. And then you have a dish, too, that you modified from me. So you see, guys, girls, it's not just me who likes to tweak recipes. My wife likes to tweak them, too. And this one's a little spin on basically it's like a mango salsa is what it used to be. I don't know what we're calling it now. It's Dawn's creation. So let me grab that. You want to tell us about that? Yep, okay. So while uh, Wayne, I'm leaving the camera on you, Wayne, while he gets the ingredients out. Um, I modified this from one of the cookbooks we have. It's a grilling cookbook. It's called the uh, Tropical Salsa. And I think we will have a link um, with the recipe to our website. And what I put, this is what I roughly did. A can of diced pineapple or uh, you know, a good serving of fresh pineapple, especially from Rouse's. Rouse's has great fresh pineapple. You can buy the, the canned pineapple. I, I save the juice, so you have a can of pineapple. I like it sweeter, so I put two bananas, not too ripe. I'd rather have them a little bit green. A couple finely diced cucumbers, a little bit of fresh lime juice, red bell pepper. I put a whole red bell pepper. This green onions, about half a batch of green onions, thinly sliced. You can put a little bit of oil. Uh, the cookbook recommends sesame oil. You can put uh, maybe a little bit of olive oil, or you can leave it out altogether. Salt, pepper, and Tabasco to taste. And we are calling this a tropical salsa. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. I need a little bigger bowl than that. Any questions from the audience? Let's see. There you go. Uh, so Kim Boltman says she just Google Chef Paul Prudhomme and see that he's come out with a line. Let's see. A line of gluten-free, sugar-free, salt-free seasonings. Couldn't see a blackened seasoning. You need to market yours, Wayne Nix. <laughs> I think he does have a blackened seasoning, but if you go, especially to someplace like Rouse's Kim, there's just so many blackened seasonings. We pulled out two that we just happened to have uh, in our cabinet, but there's just probably dozens, and uh, I think his is one of them. Well, actually, the reason I want you to tell that story about him getting bit by a bee, which was actually shot in the arm, one of the reasons I want to talk about that was you know, Chef is no, um, you know, he's not a little guy, and he's always had an issue with his weight. So he actually created some cookbooks and some things out there, like Kim's referring to, that actually will, you know, help you try and decrease your sodium, 
that sort of thing. Now, he doesn't try to market them as how to lose weight or anything like that because that he doesn't want you to think that you're not getting in any of the flavor is, is pretty much from what I've been told. Um, now, I'm just going to plate this up. I know we still got about 10 minutes, but it doesn't take long to do this stuff, guys. A lot of it's just prep work. That's what's going to take forever. Oh, I'm dropping it all over. That's all right. How's that? So, for your viewing pleasure, we have some black and red fish, which can be catfish or it could be chicken, whatever you want. This happens to be red fish. We have our little mango salsa, and we also have a little, basically a tropical rice, so pineapple rice, and it's good. Now, one other thing we didn't drop in was the recipe you made the other day, all right? Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, again, that's one of your creations. That recipe, it's basically like a blueberry coffee cake. We put some whipped cream on it, and it's 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 delicious. And we posted the other day this watermelon sorbet that we did. That was an awesome thing too. Our mo my mother-in-law actually gave us the little device, and we tried it out and made this watermelon sorbet, and it was awesome. And I think what I want to try and do is actually get some pumpkins and some cantaloupes, and do it with that too. It should be you know pretty interesting little little flavor combination. I'm talking about those little bitty mini pumpkins because I know in the winter you always see people making soups. They scoop them out, and then they put that in. Thinking maybe I might try and do that with actually the sorbet and have a little presentation there. But um, all these recipes that we're doing, we're posting on our website. But I want to know what are your recipes? What are the things you like? What are the things you don't dislike? You know, just because you're not from Louisiana doesn't mean you can't post here, right? Your heart can be in Louisiana. That's all we care about. If it's a good recipe, just let us know. Because like we've said time and time again, most of our recipes never really originated here. At least it wasn't their recipes, it was the ingredients, right? So, and it's just putting our spin and our flair on everything. Now, we'll open up the green room if anybody wants to come in and, and give us a little chit chat. That way you're not live and being broadcasted to the air. But I'd like to thank everybody for coming out again, letting us share our love of our food and our state and our culture. And again, we miss our friend Lance Fields, but we know he'll be back. Uh, we're wishing everybody well. Um, you know, our hearts and our minds go out to Evie right now as well, that she's under a lot of stress. Um, maybe it's because I've been pinging her too much. I don't know. Uh, you know, having little issues with WordPress, and like Suzanne and them say, you pretty much need to hand over the rings to people who know how to specialize in those sorts of things. Can't do it all. But I can cook, so that's where I'm going to make up. All right? So, Dawn, do you have any last words that you want to say? Yes, I just wanted... To say today, um, yes, thank you everyone for watching. Kim Boltman still there. Cheryl Deuce, Coach G Moore just came in. Um, Cheryl says, I love quick meals like this. And that's it, Cheryl. It was very quick. I mean, you can see the prep work that could go into it. But again, you have the blackened seasoning that you can get um, pre made if you like. Um, red fish, of course, was our choice today. But again, after this, um, I have to work the next couple of days, so I'm going to ask Wayne to do some blackened chicken, um, some blackened chicken and some salsa, and that's what I'll take with me to, to lunch for the next few days. I um, want to say, um, you know, to Lance, hope you feel better. Um, and then for all our uh, Acadian and Cajun friends, um, today is Acadian Day of Remembrance. And <clears throat> I have a couple of books I was hoping to put up pictures maybe for later. Um, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote a great story called Evangeline. Um, and then there's all sorts of books. Nous sommes Acadiens, which are We Are Acadians. Um, let's give a shout out to um, the Acadian Memorial in St. Montville today. And hopefully we can show some links um, on our site later on um, to some of the activities. So let me get you back over to Wayne. Okay, guys. And what I was referring to earlier with the WordPress, I was watching a show called Geek Speak. Right? And on there is where they teach you all kinds of different tech issues or basically how to make sure you can advance into 
you know, your technical skills. And I love those girls, and I've learned a lot already. And that's all we have for now. So keep those comments coming. Go to our website. Post what you want to see, what you want to hear. Tell us your stories. That's what we're here to do. And if we don't know the answers, even better, because I get to go out and go talk to people and mingle. So we'll see you next time. It'll probably be another week because we do these shows bi-weekly. We will be starting to go out and interviewing people that actually have products and that sort of thing too. That's the game plan. So if you have a product or you have something of interest, let us know. That way we can go out and do those sorts of things too. So that's all for now, guys. We'll open up the green room as soon as I say goodbye. So goodbye. <laughs>